everybody, this is Carmen from Easy Language and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to continue with our basic Cantonese grammar course and in today's video I will be teaching you about verbal aspects, otherwise known as aspect particles. So this kind of borderlines intermediate Cantonese but they are essential for constructing basic sentences and conveying simple ideas about time. So in today's video I will be introducing you to the concept of verbal aspects and we'll be looking at some of the more common, like simpler ones, just to get you started. So if you encounter these in the future in intermediate Cantonese grammar, then you will at least have an idea of what it is. So yeah. Okay, so let's go. So in many European languages, like English, verb tenses are used to indicate when an action takes place. So for example, he ate breakfast. This indicates that he has already eaten his breakfast and it is a done deal. He is eating breakfast indicates that he is eating his breakfast right now as we speak. And he will eat his breakfast indicates that he hasn't eaten his breakfast yet and isn't eating it right now, but it is something he will do in the near future, perhaps. So essentially, these languages use different forms of a verb to show whether something is happening in the past, is happening right now, or will happen in the future. Now, Cantonese, on the other hand, employs a different strategy. Like I mentioned before, you can't really change the spelling or the way a word is written to match different grammatical categories. Unlike in English, we change or we conjugate our words to match, like for example, grammatical tense, grammatical number and also grammatical person. In Chinese, there is no such thing. This concept just does not exist. So in Cantonese, instead of tenses, verbs in Cantonese are marked for aspect. This allows speakers to convey whether an action has just started, is happening right now or has already been completed. And how do we do this? So primarily, we use time adverbs and also verbal complements to help us so now before we look at examples of aspect particles, we're, let's look at why aspect particles are so important in Cantonese. Essentially, they add layers to the language. It allows us to express subtle distinctions in how actions or events relate to time. This might include nuances like repetition, completion, and also duration. So at their core, verbal aspects in Cantonese do serve a very practical purpose. They help us understand like clearly when something is happening relative to the present moment, so right now, and so essentially they provide clarity on the timeline of events or actions. But what if Cantonese didn't have verbal aspects? It would make the language very ambiguous. Without them, listeners would struggle to determine when an action took place, if it's still ongoing, or has it already finished. Now verbal aspects are more than just linguistic tools. They enrich the Cantonese language and they also allow speakers to convey subtle but detailed temporal meanings without always resorting to specific time indicators. So in a sense, they make the language more expressive and also more nuanced. Now we're going to look at the more common and the most important aspect particles. I'll try my best to explain it and draw parallels with English, but I still strongly suggest that you actively pay attention to them while you're watching Cantonese videos and this is something that's integral in part of your, as part of your language learning journey. You can start off with just one and try to notice them more and more as you get along and understand the context they are used in. It will also help with you can practice making different sentences with them, have them checked by a native or a teacher so you know whether you're using them correctly or not. So here we go. So we start by discussing the perfective aspect marked by jaw. This aspect focuses on the completion of an action. It's similar in many ways to the English past simple in many contexts, but it doesn't always indicate a past tense action. It emphasizes the completion of the action. For example, ngo si jo fan can mean I have eaten or I ate. But remember, this emphasizes the completion of the action rather than when it was completed. You can also specify the time with phrases like yesterday, as in ngo cham yat. My job bunsu. I bought a book yesterday. For negatives, instead of using jo, you use mei to replace it, which means not yet. Like ngo mei chong lang. I have not showered yet. 
The experiential aspect, marked by go, is all about experiences. It emphasizes that someone has done something at least once in the past. For example, 我去过美国 I have been to the USA. Emphasizing the experience of having been to the USA rather than when it happened, or even the completion of the action. Negatively, we pair it with, not replace, the word may, as in, <coughs> 我未试过 I have never tried it. As you can see, 过 is still used in combination with may, so you do not replace it as we did with 咗 And when asking about experiences, we also use may to ask if somebody has had had so if somebody has had an experience yet. Like, 你食过日本寿司未 Have you ever eaten Japanese sushi? Have you yet to try? And yes, time can still be specified. Like, 我寻日睇过呢一套戏 I have watched this movie yesterday. Again, this emphasizes the fact that you have watched it and not the fact that it happened yesterday. Now we're going to move on to the progressive aspect, marked by gun. Think of it as equivalent to the English ing form. It is used to indicate that an action is happening right now, that it is proceeding in this very moment as we speak. For example, 我睇紧书 I am reading right now as we speak. To say that something isn't happening right now, we use 唔系 which is a negator equivalent to the phrase "is not" in English. Just like, 佢而家唔係翻緊工 He or she is not working right now, as we speak. The durative aspect, marked by ju, signifies an ongoing action that continues over an extended period of time. For example, 佢望住你 He or she is looking at you, and has been doing so uninterruptedly for a while. You could say this is staring instead. This curative aspect mainly emphasizes the unbroken nature of an action's continuity. Like, he kept talking. He kept talking non-stop. It is also used to suggest stopping an action, like telling someone to stop doing something. For example, we can say, "Lei mu hao zha ju la." Stop holding on to it. For actions that are brief or only lasting for a split second, we use ha, the delimitative aspect. It is used to describe an action that is performed for a brief moment. In English, this can be seen as an equivalent to phrases like "for a moment" or "for a bit." For example, see ha, have a try or try for a bit. This aspect marker can also be used for an action that is to be performed casually, kind of like just do it for fun, right? No need to take it seriously. For example. Chow ha got, meaning to just have a sing, just for fun and not to be taken seriously. Now, for actions that are habits or regular occurrences, we have the habitual aspect, which is marked by hoi. It is somewhat equivalent to the present simple tense in English to describe actions that happen on a regular basis. For instance, ko jo hoi li ga gong jo, means the job is a usual thing for him or her. They do it on a regular basis. It is also used to talk about long-established habits, something that someone has been doing for a long time. Just like for someone who drinks regularly, 佢飲開酒 also indicating that he or she has been a long-time drinker. Negatively, we use the negator 唔 and this is usually placed in front of the verb to indicate that someone doesn't have a habit of doing something. For example, 佢唔飲開咖啡 Implies they usually avoid coffee, and they don't have the habit of drinking it. Now, hoi is unlike the other aspect markers we've covered so far. Hoi focuses on the habitual or the routine nature of an action, rather than its occurrence or its continuity. For emphasizing the beginning of actions, we have the incurative aspect, marked by hei zheng lei. This marks the onset of an action. For example. Kusiu hei zhongli means he or she began to laugh. It is also especially useful for sudden actions like kui da yin gan ham hei zhongli, meaning he or she suddenly started to cry, which is a surprise. Or for transitions like 
佢最近忙起上嚟 ，meaning he wasn't busy before, but he started to become busy recently. But once again, the emphasis is on the starting of this action rather than the state of change. Now, as compared with the other particles, this he sangle emphasizes more on the inception of an action or state. It is also not marked by a single character or word. It is three characters combined into one. It is also worth noting, though, sometimes only a part of the full he sangle phrase is used, such as he le without the sang, depending on the context and the desired level of emphasis. Sometimes we like to just be lazy and just say sang le or he le. So. That's to cut things short for the ease of conversation for us. Lastly, we're going to be covering the continuative aspect marked by lock ho. This refers primarily to directionality, so the direction an action is performed towards. For example, tiu lock ho, meaning to jump down. Now, if you just said tiu, it just means jump. The lock ho tells us which direction are we jumping towards. Which is down. It can also be figurative, meaning it doesn't necessarily have to be about a physical movement towards a certain direction. Usually, it refers to actions to be continued into the future, like gai zhuo dou lao ho, to continue to study something into the future. Now, lao ho is also slightly different to the other aspect markers, despite it also being two characters long. But it is essential to understand it as it brings richness to spatial and figurative expressions in Cantonese. It is also used in everyday Cantonese school of conversations to express certain nuances and also to what to mark verbal aspects. Okay, so that's all I have for today's video. Now, aspect particles are difficult. I'm not going to deny it, and it can be quite difficult to grasp at first because it isn't really something that exists in English grammar. However, like I said before, practice makes perfect, especially in context. So, to better understand the use of these particles, if you can actively listen out for these particles while you're watching a Cantonese language video, or even if you're doing a language exchange session with a native speaker, it will really help you grasp it better and really understand how it is used. So, I have written a detailed blog post on my website reiterating the concept of aspect markers, and I have included、um, even more examples to help you grasp a better understanding of it. So, head over to www.eclanguage.co.uk to check out my blogs, and also check out all the other blogs that I have on there that might help you on your language learning journey, no matter what language you're learning. Anyways, I hope this lesson was helpful for you. If it was, please like and please subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.